to be oh, amen amen i'm just taping my part so you, it's okay <laughs> and for those who can't make it today amen. so to god be the glory um praise the lord amen so um yeah, so uh, happy Father's Day to those who are on here and those who are to come. Um, we know that Father's Day was actually, Father's Day started in the U.S. It was celebrated in 1908. And um, the first recorded uh, Father's Day was celebrated in 1908. And it was because of the fathers, the 250 fathers that died in the mines six and seven in the uh, Mananga mines in West Virginia. And so like 390, 67 men were there, 362 men died. And of the 362 men that died instantly, 251 were fathers. Uh, uh, what's her name? Grace Clayton went to the pastor to ask him if he could celebrate these 250 fathers that died because they left almost a thousand children fatherless. Um, pastor Robert Thomas Webb, he was the one that actually agreed to it. On July 5th, 1908, they celebrated it. 20 years, uh, for 20 years, Sonora Dog was trying to get Father's Day to become like Mother's Day to no avail, but um, the trade traders started to back her. You know, those who sold ties and uh, pipes, smoking pipes and, you know, fishing gears and things of that nature, but still the country wouldn't have it. Well, finally, um, what was the president? Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. In 1966, he gave a proclamation. He issued the first proclamation and declared that the third Sunday should be uh, acknowledged as Father's Day. But it was actually President Lynn Nixon in 1972 that signed it into a law. And so we have the third Sunday of each June to be Father's Day. So little history, but hey. But we know we have a heavenly father and I will urge each and every one that we need to celebrate our heavenly about every day Amen. because without him, none of us would be here. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. glory to God. I wanna, uh, today's message is entitled Our Good, Good Father, as you heard the song, right? I wanna read to you uh, Matthew, six, nine through 13. Everybody knows this portion of scripture where Jesus was teaching us how to pray, right? And he started, he said, our beloved father, Abba God, who is dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name. And interestingly, uh, in the translation that I read, it said, may the glory of your light not name, but the glory of your light, be the center on which our lives turn. I'm talking to fathers today. I'm talking to mothers today, mothers to be and fathers to be, because we need the light of God to be the center on which our lives turn. Like, you know that the light is like you picture a light beam just shining down and our lives are just like the sun goes around. How, how is it? The earth goes, the sun goes around which one? Oh, Lord Jesus, you know, I've done forgotten my science. I am just in a different space. So bear with me. But y'all understand what I'm saying. This is how close we are to be to our daddy God, that he's that light that is just like we're just coming out of the light. Yesterday's message, I read the portion of scripture where David said, listen, let my heart be entwined with yours. Our hearts ought to be entwined with his. Fathers, especially, and fathers to be, your hearts have to be entwined with God's because this is the way that you can show love. That you can, when you're going through stressful times, you know, when the kids get on your nerve, when the babies are crying, when the kids won't behave, when they're following friends and doing this and that, and you're like, ah, you know, 
but but you say, you know what? My heart's entwined with yours, daddy. So I, I'm patient, I'm loving, I'm kind. I will discipline and love in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So continue reading. And so Jesus said, manifest your kingdom realm. Manifest your kingdom realm and cause every cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth, just as it is in heaven. I'm telling you, this is such a key verse, because here we're saying, let your kingdom reign in us. Like this is, I'm just, just helping, helping us here. Jesus was saying, this is how we ought to pray. And so let your kingdom reign in us. Do you know what it is when the kingdom of God is reigning in us? Come on. You're as, as Deacon Love likes to say, you're walking in divine care. Your family is walking King in divine care when the realm of heaven listen listen come on now you think about heaven in heaven there's no sin in heaven there is nothing that is impure when that is reigning inside of you sickness has to flee poverty has to flee come on your kids that you were like wait wasn't that the child that was behaving whoa yeah you ever see the you like what uh, they always leave the dishes in the sink, won't clean their room, won't make their beds, their clothes on the floor. Uh, all of a sudden you see this, they're hanging up their clothes or coming to say, mommy, daddy, can I help with so-and-so? You're like, what? Kingdom of God reigning in them. That's the kingdom of God. Listen, because, oh, I'll eat shaka rabbi, yeah, hallelujah. Listen, then Jesus said, we acknowledge you as our provider of all we need each day. Give us this day our daily bread. Do you know what Jesus is saying we ought to say? Give us our daily life. Listen, I'm telling this, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I really didn't have time to break it down because this would really be some lesson studies seriously to show you all is here but when you go read the word and you go through the scriptures you'll see it but jesus was saying that when we say give us this us uh, give us this day our daily bread the bible says we do not live by bread alone but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of god we're saying give us our daily life and listen actually what jesus really said and i think it was in luke that he broke it down and said it this way he said give us our lives continuously give us our lives from tomorrow on my god i tell you i was like whoo daddy whoo mm, amen so come on when you pray and fathers let me tell you something in your house, structure your house this way. Fathers, you bless your wives. Speak a blessing over your wives. Speak a blessing over your children and watch your house line up. I am telling you. And if there's no father in the home, let God be the first father in every home, even where there's an earthly father, but where there is none, I am telling you, I was at church and I remember we had family life weekend and they said to me, mothers, you cannot raise sons. Matter of fact, a few people came to me and said, Sister Chang, you have two sons. You can't do it. I said, well, watch God because he's their daddy. See, people thought that I thought that my children had no daddy. No, 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 no. That's what they don't understand. I knew who my children's daddy were. God was and still is because the same daddy who was my daddy is their daddy is my husband's daddy. Listen, because what I say, I say, listen, you're taking care of my husband because you're his daddy. God has no grandchildren, no stepchildren. We're all children. So to God be the glory. So I found it. So as I was studying this, I said, no, 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 no. And I asked the Lord, what was the message for today? He said that one, that one that I gave you, that's the one. See, Jesus is saying, when we're asking for a daily bread, we're asking him to give us the continuous life that he's, listen, I know sometimes Bishop used to say on the prayer line, if you don't know what to say, pray, pray, I think he used to say, pray Psalm 23 or our father prayer, which, but it is when you pray and it is called the our father prayer, but it's well, anyway, this prayer that Jesus was saying is key. And I always say nothing is, is said in the Bible without being relevant to our lives. 
everything is so apropos and so on time and so alive, my goodness. So when we are saying, give us this day, remember when we talked, Kids, y'all remember when I said that our father prayer, we used to say it as we didn't even realize what we were saying. I didn't even realize what I was saying because this is what we're saying. And so, and also he meets when we're saying, give us our daily bread. He is, we're saying meet our needs spiritually, physically, and emotionally. And as I said, in the original context in which Jesus spoke it, and he spoke it in Aramaic at that time, in the Aramaic, the translation says, give us our continual daily bread, our continual daily life, which sustains us. And doesn't God, listen, he does. You realize he does. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I know y'all silent, but I'm just saying. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Then listen. Our faithful Abba, he gives us health. He gives us the power to get wealth. He gives us wisdom to make right choices. Uh, listen, we sometimes think only children and young people need wisdom to make right choices. You'd be amazed at the amount of adults that I've known and older folks that do not make wise choices. Then you will know we all need the wisdom of God, okay? So he gives us wisdom to make right choices. He heals and delivers our minds from past traumas and stresses of our yesterdays. I'm telling you, listen, guys, when you read Psalm 139, the Passion Translation, when you read, hallelujah, glory to God, when you read the scripture, you realize that this is what the Lord is saying. And I discovered in the um, it's on Isaiah 26 and three, that he says his Holy Spirit, I'm like, my God, his Holy Spirit keeps our minds safe. My God, this is what the Lord, see, all we have to say is Abba. You don't even have to say the whole prayer. Abba, give me this day my daily bread for me and my family, boom. That's it, right? What? He says, oh, I understand. You didn't get quite the full translation, but I know what you mean. So I'll take care of it anyway. Hallelujah, glory to God. So Jesus continued. He said, forgive us the wrongs we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. And the translation from the Aramaic said, listen, daddy, send away the results of our debts. Oh, I'm telling you, that was, I was like, wait, wait, wait. Because you know, we make decisions daily. Today's decisions sometimes manifest, the results manifest then, but it manifests in our future. So it could be tomorrow, the day after that, or the day after that. This here scripture says, in the RMA, he was saying, listen, he says, pray and tell your daddy, say Abba. Just send away the debts of my of 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 of, of the results of my debts, the things that put me into debt, the things that I did that caused me to be indebted to the credit card or to people in general or to sin. Daddy, send it away, put it away, erase it, eradicate it. What, Daddy? He said, as far as the East is from the West, what? Do you believe God? I'm asking you seriously. This is serious. Do you really believe God? Because what he says he means and what he means he says. Oh, what? He says, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. But we don't even believe God. But he, 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 he helps us. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and the other part of that, what he was saying, he said, give us serenity as we also allow others serenity. I don't know about you, but when I think about serenity, I see peace. I see placid water. It's the, you know, I love, y'all know me, so you know, I love going to nature scenes, to the lake, to the beach. When I'm driving out in the sun and the 
sun's glistening of the lakes. Listen, uh, I can tell you where the parks are, the, the botanical gardens and all of this. And when I go anywhere, I try to go there. Listen, God gives us such a serenity. Do you know what that is like? That's when all hell's breaking around, loose around you. You're like calm. You're like singing that peaceful song. People looking at you like, what? Did you lose your mind? No. See, my mind has been healed and delivered and it's been kept safe by Jesus. So he's given me that song of peace right now. Hallelujah, glory to God. Let me tell you, even this morning, I just experienced some things, but Jesus, hallelujah. I'm telling you, he does it. He does it every day. When our heavenly Abba, our our daddy, God, gives us peace, sons and daughters of God, we ought to give others peace. Some people like to argue a lot, have strife in your home. No, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let it begin with you first, me first. You know what I mean. Let it begin with self first. You understand? Because when, when one gets upset, you think about if you, you, you're cantankerous, your husband's cantankerous, your children's cantankerous, everybody going to cut their life short. I'm telling you, it's a medical scientific fact. It's a biblical truth. So, hey, where are you going to go? The Bible. Then Jesus says, rescue us every time we face tribulation and set us free from evil. Jesus also says, set us free from the evil one. Hey, listen, listen. Let me read to you 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. In the Passion Translation, it says, but the Lord Yahweh is always, what? Always. Now, look at the words we're combining. Is, when something is, can't say it better than it is, okay? always so this is a constant it's like you know mount everest is mount everest it's there who's moving mount everest nobody unless god moves it right god's yahweh says he is always faithful the faithfulness of god never wavers never leaves never vacates its post, never goes on vacation, doesn't put on pajamas and sleep. No, constant. That pole of light that Jesus said in the beginning, may the glory of your light. I sometimes feel like we're rock when we hear the English translation and the English version. But the great thing about God is, even if we don't speak Aramaic or speak Hebrew or speak Greek, guess what? He will come to us and reveal it to us on a personal level. And I love that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. So Jesus says that, and so the word of God says in 2 Thessalonians, but the Lord Yahweh is always, is always faithful to place you on a firm foundation and what? Guard you, guard me, guard you guard you, each and every one here, and those to come, or those that will hear the message that couldn't be here today, because you were traveling or doing something, bless the Lord, will guard you from the evil one. Let me tell you something. Let me say this. Let me say this as it came in my spirit. You don't need, you know, some people need like, what, what's that what's the thing called? Ra rabbit's foot or... Um, you know, whatever talisman to protect you. This is the sole responsibility of Jesus. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not taking my protection or my family's pro protection out of the hands of Jesus because can nobody fulfill that post like Jesus? So I'm not trying to fulfill it. I don't want anybody else fulfilling it. And nothing we do can usurp or surpass the protection that Jesus himself, my God, husband, what? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hey, Jesus. Hallelujah. So 
when Jesus says, he says, rescue us. And in Psalm 91, in the Passion Translation, he says, when you run to me, <laughs> listen, you got, oh, I think I got to read that for you in a little bit. But anyway, see, he says, for you are the king who rules with power and glory forever. That, you know, like I just broke it down, but listen, I, I, I probably can send the tape because my daughter's taping this, still recording, not done yet. So you see, this scripture shows how much God the Father and God the Son loves us. It's palpable. I mean, my God, I don't know about you. You can feel it, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you can, right? Come on, tell me it's not just this. Okay, listen. So God loves us so much. We can, in this scripture, we see Jesus would never have prayed this prayer had he not known the love that his daddy had for him. Had he not known the love that they have for us, he'd never pray this prayer. When he prayed it, he was giving a clue. He was saying, listen, this is the daddy I know. And when I tell you that you are my brother and sister, he said, we're joint ears. And he says, listen, pray that prayer. There is, come on. You know, what I love with a lot of the Hebrew and the other languages, there are little, when he talks about jocks and tittles, there are little things at the top of the letters and towards the bottom that gives clues. Some of them are crowns. Some of them are swords. When I tell you the word of God is alive, and this is why we ought to speak the word of God. When God says, praise me, it's for a reason. He says he inhabits our praises and turn them into a weapon. Come on now. We ought to believe God. We are defeated because we do not believe God. And because we do not believe God, we do not speak him and his words. But I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but if it, you see, like, I was like, Jesus, I've been a fool for so many years. I'm walk wise. Okay. <laughs> so when I woke up, I was like, Whoop. you open my eyes to this truth. It's too beautiful for me to let go of. So here go. Y'all know me. So I want to share this with you. This, you know, well, well this is the Father's Day message. And I know fathers, you, most of you are breadwinners or you work hard or you protect the family in your prayer. And, you know, you are there to guide. And sometimes growing up as, as boys before you became men and before you became fathers, that was instilled in you. You didn't know the love of God. You didn't know the love of your father. You didn't know the love of your mother, right? You may not, not saying you are here, but you know, whoever this message is for that that appeals to. When you do not know that you are loved, you become hateful, angry, and bitter. But when you know you're loved, you live life differently. You, you, you know, you're unchallenged. When someone tells you, oh, you can't do that, you're like, your father or your mother say, listen, when daddy said, boy, you can do it because you're my son. You, you, you know you're my son, right? God says, come on, sons, you could do it because you're my sons. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That goes for us as daughters too. He yeah, said, daughters, yeah. you could do it. You know we can. Yeah, yes, we can. Obama didn't originate that one. Yes, we can. Amen. But he became his tagline. All right. Glory to God. Well, let me tell you something that I read. So listen to this. I'm just talking about how much God loves us. The church hasn't caught up with it yet. You know, this morning, my aunt said something to me. She said, oh, she's living on borrowed time or something to that effect because she is going to be 89. I said, no, that's a lie. That's a lie. Okay. In church, this is where I learned in church. I didn't accept it because I was like, wait, people used to live because they see I was a little girl who read and started to read the Bible a long time. May not have understood it, but, you know, I was a reader. Okay. And I remember people living. I remember Methuselah was the longest liver, 
right? I was like, wait, I didn't understand the whole Bible that sin came in and cut life short. But I knew God created us to live long life. Jesus said he came that we might have life and have it abundantly, right? So I was like, well, I went to church and all of a sudden church folks start saying, oh, if you live to 70, it's a blessing. And if he give you the broth of 10, <laughs> no. So let me just share this with you. So this is what had happened. Moses and the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness after they crossed the, the Red Sea, the children of Israel said, oh, yeah, whatever God says, uh, no, we can handle that. We can, we can handle, they told God they could handle that. They did. They started to complain. They started to murmur. And, and they started to die. Now, Moses said, mm -mm, wait, and if you, let me tell you something. When you read Moses, you have to laugh. It's <laughs> really, Moses went to God and said, mm, listen here, listen here, listen, listen to me. You, you see, you see them cantankerous people. He was always leaving them down the bottom and going up the hill a little bit. He said, those cantankerous people that you gave to me, Half the time, he wasn't even trying to claim that they were his. He just said, you see your cantankerous people? You see how they are? Listen, as bad as they are, now, if you keep killing them at 60 and 50, what do you think their enemies are going to say? What kind of God is that? He's just a, if he doesn't love his children, what? Mo, I'm telling you this, I'm going to, I didn't, I didn't bring the prayer today, but I have it written down. I'm, I'm read it for you one day. Remind me somebody. So Moses prayed a prayer. I told you when I came across that prayer, I said, my God, why is this not in the King James Bible? But anyway, Moses prayed and he said, listen to me, God. Now I need you to do something. Let the people at least live to 70 because our enemies are living to 70 and beyond. So at least that, and then if they even act a little good, why you don't give them a little bit, make it be 80. How many years did Moses live to? Moses was 120 climbing the hill. Nobody carried him up the hill. He didn't climb up the hill. He didn't crawl up the hill. He walked up the hill and was no more. Okay. So listen, Moses knew a truth. And let me read it to you. No, before I read it to you, this is the point I wanted to bring out. I listened to this documentary. German scientists, and I, let me just quote this little part. They say that we don't age because of our age. I just had to write that little part. They're German scientists right now. This, this was, uh, this was uh, when did I tell you about it? Mark? It's last month, May. A, or April, April, Ger uh, they didn't put the scientist's name, but the German scientists, they were um, talking and the, they, they said that this is what they came up with, that they say, we don't age because of our age. We age because our molecules get depleted. Huh? Remember, we've talked about in science, everything of molecules. There are molecules in this phone. Phone looks solid, but trust me, my phone is like this. Okay. All right. Listen, they say that we, we can, humans can live to 120 and from 120 to 150 years. Even if we are healthy, we will die at 150 because our molecules will be diminished. <laughs> No, 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 hold, hold, hold your horses. Like I was sitting on my bed jumping up. My husband had gone to work already. I was just bouncing up and down in the bed. I'm telling you. I said, wait, God, was that man a Christian or you gave this to a heathen? Because people in the church don't know this. Genesis 6 and 3 says, then Adonai. The Lord who created what man said, my spirit will not remain with humankind 
forever. Since they are flesh. Now, this is after, you know, we were carrying on with the foolishness and to the Luvian time. What happened? The flood and all of that. Here what God says. So they, they, so their days shall be what? Tell me what it says, husband. What is that? 120 years. 120 <laughs> years. Listen, children of God, stop. Lord, you get, oh, some people are like, oh, I'm, I'm turning 70. Oh, go back and read what God says. Let me tell you something. And let me tell you, and don't, when you have kids and tell your kids, take all you can from Jesus. Jesus, let me, let me tell you something. The kingdom of heaven does not act like the kingdom of earth. It is inverse. I told you, we, we, where we see objects, you sitting me, seeing me, you're not seeing me, my, my, my legs up in the air, right? But the, the, the image that goes into our eyes is inverted, it's upside down. Uh, well, why do you think God gives us these little clues? Because on earth, if, 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 if I have a cup with some water, I don't have any cup with water around. But if I have a cup and I keep pouring, that cup is going to eventually get empty unless I pour back into it. Kingdom of heaven does not, does not operate that way. The more you take, the more it, oh my God. So, you know, we act so, and people are like, God, if you can only, and, and I, 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 I'm not making fun of anybody. This is because of how we were taught erroneously in the church. God, if you can only give me a thousand dollars to pay my bill, well, I will be so gracious. No, God, you could give me a million or however many you think I should get. Therefore, I'm blessed. Bible says we're blessed to be a blessing. When he blesses me like that, I take care of my bill, your bill, and, and everybody and, and share. And we all, he bless me with millions. I can share it and we all become millionaires. How's that? <laughs> so you see, my goodness, when I read... Ooh, daddy. Ooh, shy. Ha, ha, ha. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Jesus said, after this now, New Testament, Jesus came and said, I came that you might have abundant life. Because Jesus heard the people saying Moses' prayer, thinking David wrote it. David knew better than that because David said, listen here. Oh, my goodness. Who did I share this? I shared this with someone in here, but I don't remember who it was. But or maybe not. But here it is. I shared this before. Listen, David said to God, he said, listen, listen to me, God. Time is not an issue with you. You can't die. So get this. I need more time. Give me some more time. <laughs> that was not David's prayer, guys. That was Moses praying for the children of Israel. And it didn't even affect Moses because Moses knew. He like, he made his bargain with God. He's like, listen here, I know I sinned against you and I'm not going into the promised land, but I got to outlive some people because I got to show them that, listen, this is who my God is. And he wasn't even saying this is who my daddy is. He was just saying this is who my God is. And come on, God is our daddy and we can't even, mm, my God. So listen, listen. <laughs> I want to share with you something also. Let me share something. Uh, Jesus, God the Father, is very, he's a merciful God, right? Amen. Hear what the Bible says. I'm going to read you this. Um, so I'm going to read uh, Nehemiah 9, 17. And I'm going to interject in between. So it says, they refused to obey and did not remember the miracles you had done for them. I am saying this to not just fathers to strengthen you, to mothers as well, to children as well, because you're, you're young adults and you're growing up. Listen, this is to strengthen us. That, listen, Jesus, here in the Bible says, they refused to obey and did not remember the miracles you have done for them. Instead, they became stubborn and appointed a leader to take them back to their slavery in Egypt. This is what folks are doing when you, uh, the, 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 all the back killing and the this killing you and the that killing you and the pains is your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whatever. And to speak negatively, the things that God says not to say, this is what's happening. So 
listen. So he says, hear this, but you are a God of forgiveness. Now, stay right here with me. Listen, I didn't even intend to stay this well, but here, here it is, here it is, here it is. So it, forgiveness has two words, uh, nasa, N-A-S-A, and salah, S-A-L-A-H, salah and nasa. Let me read this to you. Both words mean to pardon, to take away the guilt of your sin, right? Let me tell you something, fathers, when you're freed, when you realize how free you are, you parent differently because the Bible said freely you receive, freely give. When you realize you can discipline your children in another way, you don't call them names. You don't curse your seed, okay? Because that's your lineage. That boy is carrying on your name. That girl, the fruit of her womb will be still an extension of you. These are legacies, right? So listen, Micah 7, 7 8 through 19 says these beautiful and wonderful words. Who is a God like you? Who pardons? Now, this is where the first nasa is used. So who pardons, who nasas sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever. Fathers, don't stay angry with your kids forever for God is not angry with you forever. But the light to show mercy. My God, you ought to show some mercy. <clears throat> You will again have compassion on us. God is a compassionate God. Amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Oh, Jesus. I, listen, if I was at the ocean, I'd be jumping up and down in it right now. My God. <laughs> you know, what I love with Mark, let me tell you something. Uh, when Mark would discipline the kids, <laughs> well, I was like, okay, listen. Can't today, can't today, can't today. This one too stubborn. Mm -mm. Mark just come and he says, you know, you're doing such a great job. Oh, or, you know, the report card, whatever, whatever thing current, he would just compliment <laughs> me. I'd be like, listen, come here. Let me, let me just, <laughs> in love, I'm just telling you, I'm, I, 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 I'm not complimenting right now. I'm saying, listen to me, you know better. <laughs> but he taught me differently. So <laughs> praise Jesus. Amen. So we ought to. Now, I'm not just saying this to the fathers, but to the mothers as well. Praise God. And some of you have learned quicker than I did, but I'm growing and I thank God for when he brought it in my life. Amen. So Salah removes the guilt that is associated with moral sin and wrongdoing connected to a ritual vow. So it's like this, where you lie or you made a vow to God and you broke it. You know, some people go around feeling guilty. Don't worry about it, daddy understands. Cause hear this, Isaiah 55 says, when we turn to God, we are pardoned. See, when you lie and when you break that vow, you say, you know what daddy, be like David, be like David, just turn to him, okay? He says, let the evil, let the wicked forsake his way. You think that God, you know, we, 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 we're so down on people who are in the world when so many people in the church are worse than the people that's out in the world. You ever wonder sometimes how people will come out of the world and they'll be like, all of a sudden they start flourishing. They're getting rich, they're getting a job, their life changing, they're married, all kinds of things, have, having children. And you're like, wait, I've been sitting here all along, what's going on? Because they see God through eyes that, you know, when we sit in there complacently need to see it. See, every day the Bible says God gives us new mercies, new grace. You understand? Every day, it ought to be like a new day. When I had my children, every last one of them, guess what? The nurses say, wait, is this your first child? Doctors was like, is this your first? And when I say no, they're like, you act like it's your first child. I'm like, well, the first time I'm seeing this one, <laughs> you know, I'm just grateful. <laughs> I'm just grateful every day. It's like, wait, God, you wake me up. It's a new day. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. He breathed some breath in our bodies. Huh? 
my God. Even if you, you have a little pain or you're going through something, it's subject to change. Thank him for who he is to you. It, and, and, and so I don't know about you, but this is reaching me differently because it says, he said to me, it, well, well, <laughs> okay. So the scripture says, let the wicked forsake his way. And I, I, I thought about this and I'm like, my God, sometimes when I'm out in the street and I tell people things and they say, really, that's in the Bible. Oh my gosh, lady, what? They're so excited. And I'm like, I could say that to a Christian, something. And they'd be like, yeah, I know that already. Or, mm. But anyway, so God says, let the wicked forsake his way. And the evil man, his thoughts, it begins with our thoughts. Sometimes, what, you lay up in the bed and instead of thinking, my God, you're such a great God, you're such a mighty God. What a day. Look at the things you did for me. Be thinking, hmm. That man, what he did to me, that woman, what she did, them kids, you plotting against your kids, your kids plotting against you, husband plotting against wife, wife plotting against husband, uh, sisters plotting against sisters and brothers and cousins and you name it and friends, whole world just plot, laying in the bed thinking about me. I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm going to get, but the man. He was plotting the night. He said, I'm going to build a bigger barn. I'm going to tear this down. And the Lord said, you fool. Your life is required of you. Don't plot against nobody. Jesus will handle them. Just think about the goodness of the day. You know, when I think about how I went out, how he showed me favor, how this person gave me this and that person gave me that, I didn't even expect it. I was like, oh, I was just excited. I was like, daddy, that was you. I know it was you. And when I came, I'm moving. And just as I'm coming in, I'm like, wait, I'm so, I got to bring the bags upstairs. Nobody's there right now. How am I going to bring these bags? And someone comes out and say, hey, do you need help bringing your bag? Mm -hmm. I don't have any parking. I come and I'm like, oh, need to use the bathroom. You gotta run upstairs. Hey, because I know I won't make it from two blocks away. And, and, and I'm like, and someone pulls out. Didn't even see when they went in their vehicle. The vehicle just pulls out. So I, I have to thank God. Morning, night, noon, day, every moment, all day, whenever, like, I'll be the one in the supermarket. Listen, people be just like, yeah, I forgot to do that. Because I'll be like, I go in the supermarket and I'm like, what? This was here for me. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> people go, people be asking, what is that you're buying? Is it, just, you know, white folks go, what is that you're buying? What do you use that for? Is it that good? Because you seem overly excited. <laughs> yes Jesus saved it hid it for me yes that's what it is <laughs> oh Lord thank you Jesus so Jesus <laughs> oh gosh oh, that Mark's used to this <laughs> let him turn to the Lord he will have mercy on him here comes the second word which means the same thing but used in a different context and to our God, he will freely, salah, he will freely pardon. You see, God, continue reading now. Um, uh, I'm, what am I reading here? Nehemiah 9 and 17. God, continue reading. You can read it for yourself because I'm, I'm just going to be like, you know, when the Holy Spirit take over, you just, I think I asked Kamali to put it up. Look in the chat so you can go read it for yourself. <laughs> And just have a marvelous time with the Lord. God is gracious, okay? Hanun, C-H-U-N-U-N. God is a gracious God. He is El Hanun. It's pronounced ha, but it's guttural for the Jew. I can't do that. I might choke. So anyway, he is merciful, El Rahum. And El Rahum is the one with the wound, okay? And slow to become angry. So God is saying to fathers, be gracious, be merciful, be so to become angry as I am with you because God is Erica Pime. He is patient. This is very patient. Hmm. He's so patient. <laughs> Moses. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, hon. <laughs> and God is rich and unfailing. Ahava. Okay. 
you did not abandon them. God has not abandoned you. Even if you're a, 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 without mother, earthly mother and father currently, you're not abandoned. You have a, a, a heavenly Abba and you have a heavenly Ima and you have Yeshua. I mean, I can't even begin to break down the host of who you have on your side. Not just you, me, but I'm just saying, if you're a person who feels as if you're alone, who feels that because you lost your mom or your dad, or you know that, or a father who lost their father and don't, no longer has their father around, um, I'm one who lost both my parents. You know, my husband lost both his parents too. It was really rough on us. The time, man, we went through sometimes, but Jesus, I tell you this, man, God has made him strong. Bless the Lord. So I just want to say, to all you fathers, we appreciate you. We love you. God loves you even more. I want you to have a truly wonderful Father's Day. And wives and children, respect your dads. Even if you don't agree with them, respect them. It's lengthening your life. The whatever your father did not provide for you, give that to God. If he wasn't the father he was supposed to be, if he wasn't the provider he was supposed to be, if he wasn't the protector he was supposed to be, give that to Abba. Cast that care upon the Lord. And you do what you need to do. And for mothers, for the fathers who weren't there for their children, don't put the fathers down to the children because that's still a part of their gene which is still a part of you. So in essence, you're actually cursing the lineages. Let God handle that. Let, I'm saying that as a person who had to be a single parent for a very long time, child. Let daddy handle it. He takes very good care of it. Trust me when I tell you that one. So let me say, um, Deuteronomy 11 and 21, I want all you fathers to have a glorious day on heaven as it is on earth. Let me read you this. To especially you fathers and fathers to be and fathers fulfiller fathers and fathers who, you know, whatever role you play as a father. When God's words are in your heart, hear what Deuteronomy 11 and 21 says, that your days may be multiplied. And the days, and this goes for women too, but fathers, we, we're talking to fathers there. And the days of your children. So it's not just your days being multiplied, but the days of your children. You see how tightly we are connected? We're connected on every hand. The days of your children in the land of the Lord swear unto your fathers to give to them as the days of heaven upon earth. How many times we've had days of heaven upon earth? Huh? Lots of times, right? <laughs> we can't even tell you, I'll tell you. God bless the day I came across this scripture. Amen. Listen, so I'll close with this and then whoever wants to jump in, you can jump in. I pray, gentlemen, this upon your life. Deuteronomy 33 and 25 says, the bolts of your gates will be as iron and bronze. As your days, so will your strength be. He proves it every time. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. Anyway, thank you guys. Um, anyone wants to say anything? Whoops, whoops, sorry. Amen. To God be the glory. What a God. What a God. I tell you. Yeah. I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers, presidents, and fathers to come. You all have a blessed day and enjoy your day. Get some rest <laughs> and just enjoy your day. Yeah. And I'll let your Heavenly Father, <laughs> Heavenly Father also is our real Father. We also should praise Him too. For being there for us as fathers. Amen. Amen.